Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss deferred tax liability. Well, deferred tax liability is a liability. And what is a liability? A liability means you are responsible for settling something into the future, making a payment, rendering a service, satisfying an obligation. What is that obligation the result of? Well, it's the result of deferred taxes. It means in the future, you're going to have to pay more taxes because the taxes are being deferred. And this is what a deferred tax liability is. Now, how does a deferred tax liability comes to life? How is it created? Well, it's created from something we called a temporary difference. So we have temporary and we have permanent. The deferred tax liability is a result of temporary difference. That is the difference between the tax basis of an asset or a liability and its reported carrying or book basis. So we have an asset or a liability. Let's assume we have an asset, but this could be an asset or a liability. And as a result, we have two sets of books. We have the IRS, which is tax, and we have GAAP. And as a result, for GAAP purposes, we have an asset. And that asset is, let's assume, uh, $100,000. And this is the result, to be more specific, from an account receivable. Because we made the sale on account. As a result, we debited account receivable. We credited sales. For tax purposes, we don't record this revenue because it's not it's not cash as far as the irs are concerned this is tax for tax purposes we don't have an account receivable so there's a difference of a hundred thousand and this is what we mean by a difference between a tax basis of an asset and its book value in the financial statement that will result in a future taxable amount or future deductible amount which we don't we don't worry about deductible amount future deductible future taxable amount because we are discussing the third tax liability. Now, another way to put this, it's a future taxable Im income that is an estimation of the amount that income will be subject to income taxes. So in the future, in the future, let's assume our tax rate is 20%. So in the future, this $100,000 will be subject to a 20% tax rate. As a result, we are responsible for 20,000. Not now, for tax purposes, this will be in the future. So it's a future taxable income. The future taxable income is 100,000, which will be subject to a 20% tax rate, which will result in a $20,000 deferred tax liability. So revenue accounted for under accrual basis for accounting purposes and cash basis under tax basis. So as a result, we have an account receivable for GAAP. We have no account receivable for IRS. As a result, we have to say in the future, the account receivable of GAAP will eventually be taxable. When it becomes taxable, what do we have to do? We have to pay taxes. So we have to book our deferred tax liability now to reflect this future 20,000 of future liability. The best way to illustrate this is using an example with figures. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's assume Adam Corporation has one temporary difference, which is an account receivable at the end of 20X1 that will reverse and cause a taxable amount of 60,000 in X2, 50,000 in X3, and 70,000 in X4. Okay, let's translate this. We have an account receivable at the end of 20X1. Well, this account receivable will reverse in the next three years. So as far as gap, we have a receivable of 50 plus 60 is 110 plus 75 is 185. We have an account receivable of 185. For tax purposes, we don't have an account receivable. So this account, this is an account receivable for tax or IRS. We don't have an account receivable. Notice we have a difference of 185,000. And we are told this difference will reverse and they're giving us the year and the rate 
60,000 of that difference will reverse in 20x2. In other words, we expect the customer to pay 60,000 in x2. And of x3, we're gonna add to our taxes 50,000 in x3. And we're gonna add another 75,000 in x4. So this is how it's going to reverse. Well, Adam pre-tax financial income for 20x1 is 300,000 and the tax rate is 20% for all years to make it easy because you could have a different tax rate in future years because the government can change it or they, you know, based on the planning purposes, they will tell you, for example, in two years, the tax rate will go up. But for some simplicity, the tax rate is 20%. There are no other deferred taxes. Compute taxable income, income taxes payable and income tax expense for 20x1. So notice, I can ask you several questions about this exercise. So let's see, let's take a look at what's going on here. So we're starting with x1, which is the current year. We have financial income of 300,000 that's giving to us financial means gap income. We have to back out of it 185,000 to come up with our taxes because this is for book purposes but we have to back out 185,000 of revenues and account receivable to come up to our taxable income, which is 105. So as far as 20X1, this is 20X1, the company is responsible for paying 21,000 in taxes, which is if we take 105, which is the taxable income, 105,000, multiplied by 20%, and that's gonna give us 21,000. So this is what we are responsible for paying today, which is the CD income taxes payable. What's gonna happen is this. Remember, 60,000 of it, of this amount, will reverse in X2, 50,000 in X3, and 75,000 in X4. So assuming the same tax rate, in the future for 20X2, we're gonna pay 12,000 for that amount, for, so for the 185,000, as a result of this in X2, we are responsible for signing a check for 12,000. For X3, we are responsible for signing a check for 10,000 because 50,000 would reverse. And for X4, we are responsible for paying 15,000 because 75 will reverse. And notice if you add them up, once they reverse, the net effect is zero. So let's start with a journal entry. The first thing I am going to do is to book your income tax is payable because I always advise you to start with that figure. Income tax is payable means how much do we have to pay the IRS this year? So we're computing this income tax is payable, with, which is the check that you have to write to the IRS. And this amount is 21,000. After you book the income tax is payable, you figure out what is your net deferred tax liability or net deferred tax asset. We know it's a liability. Here, what we have to do is credit 12, plus 10 is 22, plus 15 is 37. In the future, we are responsible for paying $37,000. Now, we also learned that how we do we compute income tax expense? So deferred tax liability is done. We, are, we computed that. How do we have to compute income tax expense? Well, income tax expense, it's income taxes payable, what we are paying now, plus if we have any future liability because our liability is increasing. Therefore, our income tax expense is the addition of those two. And don't worry, we'll look at more about income tax expense, how to compute income tax expense, a little bit more in details, because sometimes you're gonna have income taxes payable, deferred tax liability going up, sometimes deferred tax liability go, goes down, which is the opposite of what we just did. You're gonna have income taxes payable and deferred tax asset going up or deferred tax liability going down. We'll figure out how to do that down the road. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true-false questions that's going to help you understand this topic better and help you answer questions you might face in your courses, in your CPA exam, CMA exam. Good luck, study hard, and invest in yourself. Stay safe.